Flashpoint South China Sea is a great game to play solo. I'm going to take the US side here against China and we'll see how we do here today on Legendary Tactics. I am really enjoying the solo game in Flashpoint South China Sea. I think the bot gives a very good challenge. Um, it's not unbeatable, um, but it plays reasonably well. and. Uh, um, it's a, it's a great way to uh, to play this game. Now I'm not going to show you any of the the solo stuff. There's a, a deck and so forth that I can't uh, show you because it's not part of the module here. Uh, but uh, that's GMT's policy uh, is to leave the solo tools off uh, any sort of online module. So I'll respect that. I'm going to deal myself my six cards and place my cubes. Um, I'm just going to place them around in general. I don't know if there's a better strategy than that. Um, but I think taking the lead in four different countries certainly helps out um, in terms of potentially scoring uh, a couple things. Uh, the, uh, the bot places a, an economic in Vietnam and Philippines and a diplomatic in Malaysia and the Philippines. And, take a quick look at my hand uh, I mean very solid there's lots of my events um, which is great well, one leader as well which I will uh, touch on why that's so important to uh, to get uh, as the US in the solo game my opponent uh, plays uh, uh, a card to score the Philippines right off the bat it's only one victory point at this stage but um, that's uh, something to give uh, the the china bot a little bit of a lead here but that actually is fine i'm totally fine with that because it allows me to play my leader and why that's important is because i can raise the tension to high and make placing crs very expensive so i'm going to go into malaysia cancel out the scoring there i'm trying to limit the scoring opportunities for the uh, the bot of course then the bot goes and scores economics for a point. And uh, so that's uh, that's not good. Um, so now I'm looking at the uh, situation and uh, I'm gonna score Brunei in retaliation for, uh, for that. And um, my opponent then uses the leader to lower the tension right to low to set up uh, some CR uh, opportunities. So I'm going to take the uh, the event here. I'm going to place uh, the phone op um, in the uh, the Philippines, um, and I'm going to take the opportunity to remove some uh, diplomatic cubes. That pushes the tension to medium, but unfortunately, that is just enough for the uh, China player to place a CR and I try and really try and limit the number of CRs that are placed uh, in the um, in the in the early game especially because the, the differential can add up to a lot um, I'll take the event to remove all the economic influence from Vietnam it does lower the tension back to medium though which of course uh, the bot then takes advantage of and places another CR um, and this is why generally you want to keep the tension at high. It means that the bot can only play CRs when they uh, happen to get a three up card and uh, only if it doesn't uh, trigger another uh, event. So I'm going to uh, score Vietnam and uh, my opponent then uh, decides to <laughs> draw a, a three up card and place another CR. So you see, I'm really falling behind. I'm down three CRs at this point, which is uh, can, especially over the course of a, of a game can be significant. And even in the end game, scoring a four point flip is pretty, uh, pretty big deal. So I'm going to place this last uh, cube uh, in the diplomatic track. I'm just placing them in a way that, right, place it in the economic and then I changed my mind. Um, but uh, placing the diplomatic track just to uh, make sure those cubes are preserved uh, going into the next phase. I remove my phone op and one economic cube from each side per country as the money is spent and needs to be reallocated. Now what's interesting is uh, China is essentially, other than the CRs, is out of every country um, other than the Philippines. So I've definitely limited the the scope of uh, 
their uh, expansion except in the area of CRs. That's just the one area that's a bit tricky. Um, and look at my hand for the second uh, campaign, second round. Uh, some high ops, but uh, risky <laughs> events uh, for um, for uh, for me. Uh, and I've got three leaders, and I I, I see the the leaders as being more useful and more valuable than they might initially appear. I don't really have a problem having three leaders in my hand, even if the tension's already at high and you would think that I wouldn't need them. There's some neat tricks that you can do. You're going to see a, a couple of neat things I've discovered this turn here. So um, so my opponent then uh, decides to um, place a, uh, a cube in the Philippines and in Indonesia in the economic uh, boxes on on in those two countries and i am going to play that one even though it's my own event i'm going to play a couple of cubes into vietnam it creates a a two point differential that i'm hoping to take advantage of um, then my opponent uh, decides to place a, a cube in malaysia and in the philippines um, setting up uh, some potential scoring there and one of the things that I like leaders for is they are very easily scored. You don't mind playing them for scoring. And I got two points there. My uh, my opponent, the China bot, then scores economics and pushes the uh, score back down two points. I'm going to flip the Vietnam uh, scoring card as well as the economic one because I uh, forgot to flip it earlier. Um, so I'm going to play... Uh, Kim Jong-un uh, lower the tension to medium and then play in a phone op and this is a, another neat trick that you can do uh, when you want to play a phone op you can lower the tension real quick and then it bounces back up now my opponent attempts some political warfare and fortunately it does not occur uh, as the drawn card is higher uh, than it uh, than the than their event card so we're going to put that back under the uh, under the deck and instead they get to go again and they place a cube in Vietnam and one in Malaysia so they get a, a pretty powerful play there if they miss the um, if they miss the political warfare so I'm gonna take some ops I'm gonna pull some cubes out of reserve um, and I'm going to cancel the potential scoring in Malaysia uh, my opponent has a mode match here um, and so, uh, but fortunately, scores economics. Uh, mode matches are kind of nasty when they happen in uh, the solo game. Um, I'm going to play um, my other leader here. And uh, I really don't have a ton of uh, options. So I'm just going to put something in the political tension track there. And uh, my opponent then follows up with a couple of cubes, one in Vietnam and one in the Philippines, totally dominating the Philippines right now. And then my last uh, card play, which I was holding on to because I did not want to give uh, the opportunity to my opponent. Um, we're going to play two cubes into um, the political tension track. I'm going to pull my phone ops back and then place it in the diplomatic track in Indonesia. And that begins, uh, well, just as we do the end of uh, round cleanup, we're going to pull the economic cubes uh, out per per country, one per country. And uh, I lose three cubes back uh, to the uh, box, and uh, China loses four. We're on to the last round. Uh, tension uh, has come down. We're going to draw the cards for the turn, and we'll take a look at my hand. Once again, three leaders. Um, again, not a, necessarily upset about that. Um, got a, you, they're great for scoring. They're great for uh, playing phone ops safely, that kind of thing. So, And I've got a couple of uh, Chinese events and one potentially useful US event. Now, my opponent uh, plays the card to lower the tension right to low. Again, setting up CRs. Um, I am going to... Uh, take the opportunity to boost the tension to medium and then play a phone op um, or sorry then play um, sorry uh, Malaysia uh, sorry I play into Malaysia and then do political warfare which automatically uh, succeeds 
Um, I'd stored up my political warfare cubes there, and uh, this is my chance to unleash. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of great opportunities. Uh, no way to wipe out three cubes, but I'll neutralize the Philippines for now, push the tension to high. And uh, then uh, my opponent takes that opportunity to play a leader and lower the tension right to low again. I'm going to play Mr. Putin's uh, card and push the tension uh, up to medium and play a phone up and that raises the tension to high. So you see what I mean? The leaders can really manipulate the tension track to your advantage. Um, now, the, uh, my opponent then does some political warfare uh, with their uh, next card. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, that means that I'm going to lose some influence in Vietnam. I get totally wiped out there. And uh, but I do have an event that can potentially help me in that case. Um, so we're going to look at uh, just getting rid of this uh, event for now. And we're going to score Indonesia, which is completely empty. Take advantage of that and uh, manage to dodge a mode m match and so forth. Uh, then my opponent plays into Indonesia. It's funny how the bot sometimes plays almost uh, in a way that uh, perfectly counteracts what you were thinking of doing. Uh, one in Vietnam, one in Brunei, and one in, uh, in Indonesia. So I'm going to take the other uh, event there. I'm going to reinforce uh, Brunei. And uh, I'm also going to reinforce Indonesia to keep my edge in both of those. Um, then my opponent uh, plays UN action uh, petition, another political warfare attempt, which uh, which occurs. Uh, man, I really, I really got slammed on the political warfare. Malaysia is totally gutted, um, and. Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of cards left to play here, <laughs> so just a couple. Um, so the tension is high and critical, so I'm going to use that to place uh, one uh, economic influence and three diplomatic. And this is a bit of a power play because I could play into the locked countries uh, with the event. And so um, that was a bit of a power play. My opponent then uh, takes the opportunity uh, to, uh, to score the... Uh, see our phone ops uh, uh, track here and uh, that is is going to be a uh, um, bit interesting here I've got a leader left I've only got one card one op left I'm going to lower the tension down to um, to medium and I'm going to place a phone op there to cancel out that it, tension goes back to high and we reverse the scoring cards and we see what happens here. So Brunei scores one for me. Uh, Indonesia is one for me. Or sorry, two for me, sorry. Um, sorry, Malaysia is a wash. Vietnam, due to my late play, is a wash. Uh, the Philippines is one point for me, which is good. Uh, the economic um, score, if you if you look, it takes a little bit to see, but that's a wash. And the CR phone op is a one victory point for China. And so that is the final score. I managed to squeak it out uh, with two victory points and uh, managed to pull off a win. So I hope this gave you a sense of uh, how fast and fun the uh, the solo game can be. And we hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Thank you so much for watching. This is Legendary Tactics.